Bienvenidos, mi gente. Don't worry, Brian. I will not spend the entire podcast speaking Spanish. That would probably confuse you. Although I could. I originally planned to do a monologue, but I'm not going to do a monologue. Um, so anyway, uh, in case you guys did not know what I just said, uh, welcome, my people. How are you doing tonight? Uh, we are recording a brand new episode of the Channel Chasers podcast. As always, I am your host. Jay from Mr. Jay's Reviews, and joining me as always is my friend, my co-host, my self-proclaimed sidekick, Brian Kersey. How you doing tonight, Brian? Hola, me amo es Brian. <laughs> All right, Mr. Exploratory Spanish. I appreciate uh, it. Yeah. I took two years in high school, and that's about it. Uh, hey, peoples. Yeah, so um, we are doing... Um, one of my personal favorite sitcoms of recent years, to be honest with you. Um, and I'm, you know, I, I really wanted to do this, especially because, you know, this show is a special case because it's so good and the fans are so dedicated to it that it was saved from can Netflix cancellation, which almost never happens. Uh, so I, I gotta just, you know, Isn't this yeah. the first time that that's happened? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the first. Yeah, actually, now that you mention it. Because Netflix is always saving other shows. Yep. This is the but first time someone has saved a Netflix show. Because it deserved, it deserved more. Right? And, you know, rightfully so. Uh, you know, a big shout out to Mike Royce, Gloria, um, you know, everybody involved with the show. I mean, obviously, you know, Fans were a big part of that too, but like you guys, man, like you made an amazing show. The legendary Norman Lear is behind this as well. Of course, he was also behind the original. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have only seen a dedicated fan base. I think this dedicated only one other time, which is funny because they're kind of connected. Because <laughs> you know, there's a lot of overlap actually. And I believe you're talking about the Weiner Art fan base. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap there, actually. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, funny enough, when both shows were going through turmoil, both showrunners uh, uh, were actually, you know, helping Emily out and, you know, tweeting the fight for Winona stuff. And, I, of course, Emily returned the favor um, by, like, you know, helping with the Save ODAT campaign. And uh, both basically became both showrunners basically became friends from there yep it's pretty pretty freaking awesome uh love this show so much uh we did a full episode on the original channel chasers um like discussing the first three seasons um and because this is technically only half a season and we do have a promised second half coming uh we're actually going to spend most of this episode talking about basically the first three seasons and this first half. Because if we just talked about the, you know, the half of season four that we got, it would only be like a 20 minute episode. And, uh, you know, that's not how we roll. That's not how we roll at all. Because, um, I mean, only six episodes were, were done. Yep. And, uh, you know. Uh, they actually do film it in front of a live audience, but of course, due to the pandemic and, you know, all those circumstances, uh, they, they couldn't film in front of the live audience for the last two, I believe. So they had to actually use a laugh track for that, uh, those two. Um, yeah, but one of them, one of them really didn't need it too yeah, much. It was more, yeah, that was definitely way more of a feelsy episode. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're going to basically kind of like just, you know, talk about this amazing show just overall and in general, like all four seasons. We're not obviously going to just go episode by episode and talk about everything because that's a lot of episodes, uh, but just kind of broad stroke stuff and just why we enjoy the show. Um, so I'm going to start with you, Brian, um, because I introduced you to this one. Uh, what were, uh, did you have you did you hear about anything about it coming in like besides me? Uh, did you how, do you have any experience with the original? Um, like what what uh, what was your what were your thoughts going in? Well, it's been like four years since that happened, so I'll try to remember as best as I can. Yeah, um, yeah, it's been a while. I know. Uh, 
I vaguely knew about the original, uh, and I heard that the new one was coming, and and uh, I saw trailers, and it looked it looked good, but also definitely about that time, uh, my a little uh, personal thing. Um, my parents at that time were really big into like. All the Chuck Lorre shows. So, I saw comedy with like laughing and all that, and uh, I honestly had a fear that it was going to be like a Chuck Lorre show. Ah, uh. which if you like Chuck Lorre stuff, uh, good on you. Just he, he's the typically... he's the Big Bang guy, right? Um, uh, yeah, but also he. He did stuff like Two and a Half Men and uh, other things that I really didn't like. Two and a Half Men. Especially Two and a Half Men. Two and a Half Men was um, alright in the beginning. In the beginning, yes. Uh, Especially after Charlie Sheen went wacko crazy. Charlie Sheen and um, the kid both went wacko crazy. Yeah. The show really suffered. Um, and made a lot of unnecessary homophobic jokes and really threw me off. But, uh, anyway, so I saw this and I saw the laughing sitcom thing and I will openly admit there was some fear there that this might go in that way. Um, but then Jay told me about it and how much he liked it and, uh, he pushed me a little bit to watch it um, and I wouldn't until finally he wanted to do the season the season three uh, for Channel Chasers and so I binged the whole thing and really liked it. I mean at that at that point uh, Jay had also a uh, little peek behind the curtain especially for you those who don't know about the history of the video channel chasers. That was about time that Jay was recommending a lot of stuff for me that I was binging. That was really good. Um, I think that was around the time that I binged since eight. Oh man, yeah, it was around that time. Yeah, that was a golden era, man. That was on fire with my recommendations. Uh. Yeah, no, uh, highly recommend that show. Um, but that I, one I, had I, such I think... huge. I actually think One Day at a Time was the follow-up episode, if I remember correctly, uh, to the the Sense8 one, which is weird tonal whiplash, but yeah, no, still fun. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, and, uh, and that was another show that had such a dedicated fan base that after it was canceled, it didn't get... It didn't get um, saved, but it got closure. It got a, it, it got enough to satisfy the fans. At least I felt satisfied. A movie, yeah. A whole, a whole ass movie. Yep. It, and, but, and it got um, a, it got a Christmas and New Year's special as well too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But this was this show. Like I, it started off, and I thought it was going to be typical sitcomy type stuff, but. As it grows and you see the characters, uh, they really grow to be like big characters that you love, especially people like Penelope and our girl Elena, which for those that don't know, we kind of like (laughs) really like protective child thing with Elena and the old show. (laughs) Oh yeah, no, but, for sure. Um, but yeah, but, but yeah, I really liked the first three seasons. Third season was definitely like the most dramatic and the best. It had like the quinceanera and all that. Was was, was that season, was that season three? I, uh, the, I think that might, have, or maybe it's blended together for me. I, I don't know. Was that season three? I, I believe it. I believe it was because that was also the episode where. Um, where the dad 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that is. I think that was season three. Yeah, yo, those every season for this for that show. I mean, I'm including this mid season finale, but every finale that we've experienced has like gotten me to tear up a little bit each time. Mm-hmm. This one got me close, but I think I didn't because I had a little bit of um, computer issues. While watching it, but um, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So uh, with me, um, I had never heard of the original. Like, obviously, I know who Norm. I'm a huge TV fan, and I'm a TV nerd. I know who Norman Lear is. I know uh, like all the stuff he's done, and like I had heard the name of the original. I had never seen it. Um, and uh, so like. How I came across this is a funny story. I was actually having a conversation with Elizabeth, and uh, we were talking about George Lopez um, and how much we loved that show. And she was like, "Oh man, if you like, if you enjoy George Lopez, let me tell you about this new show that's out. Like, you've got to have seen One Day at a Time, right?" And I'm like, "What's that?" And she's like, "Oh my God, you've never seen it? That sounds it's like." right up your alley you've got to watch it like especially especially for you considering you know not not just like your heritage but like i think you would definitely relate to like a lot of these characters just in general um and i'm like all right let me i'll check it out and i watch it and like the first thing that catches my eye is the fact that rita freaking moreno is the abuelita and i'm like wait that's rita moreno from west side story mm-hmm Holy shit! Oh man, like that blew my mind. Uh, like, and man, like ever since I, I I saw the first episode, I think it it was around the time that season two was about to drop. I binged the first season, um, and man, let me tell you, like that, I I instantly fell in love. I you know related to a, a lot of the different characters um you know especially also because uh you know my dad's um uh, my dad's a former um naval officer so like i'm i'm a, i'm a child i'm a military brat myself um you know my dad spent most of his life in the navy um, and uh, let's be honest you do have a lot in common with the son alex i mean I guess he's definitely more fashiony than me. Uh, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not the I'm not the fashion type. Uh, he definitely reminds me a lot of my like my younger brother for sure. Um, I feel like I'm just a, I, I feel like I'm a less annoying version of Elena um, because I love that girl to death, but my God, she's she was really really annoying. Um, but also. I, uh... You do have Alex's like way with women. I mean, you know, smoothness is smoothness. I I guess. Um, I get. Uh, wow, did I just humble brag on the podcast? I, I think I just humble bragged on the podcast. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. I I mean, I I can see that for sure. Um, like and like definitely, like I said, I could, I could relate different parts of my family to this, like. You know, my grandma is very, very, very similar to Lydia, and like, I love my abuelita to death. Oh my god, it was it was so good that I showed her this show because you know she loves she loves Rita Moreno because you know what Puerto Rican doesn't love Rita Moreno, um, and like she was like oh my she's like oh you you can marry me to Rita uh, Rita Moreno that's so sweet like but yeah no she reminds me a lot of her in terms of personality very loud and boisterous and energetic and opinionated judgmental but in a loving way um it's uh i i like i I just with it a lot um like i said i'm all like i I like all the characters snyder is my boy like he grew he grew on me and he grew on me a lot minus minus the rich part snyder is who i relate to the most I mean, you know, I would hope so because if if you're holding out on me, Brian, I would I would have expected you to subscribe to my Blair a long time ago. <laughs> Just saying, thought we were friends. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, no, Snyder, Snyder's great. Um, 
like I said, Elena, like she, she's a character that I uh, like. I find really annoying, but also in a very, very endearing way. Like I roll my eyes every time she opens her mouth, but also like it, it doesn't feel like the show is trying to use her as a mouthpiece. It genuinely feels like that's who she is as a person. So like it's annoying, but it's cute. It's endearing. Yeah, exactly. And endearing is the perfect word I could use to dis- sub- uh, describe her. Um, uh, Penelope is just great. Uh, I, I just I love her character. She's really funny. Uh, she's doesn't take shit from anybody. She reminds me a lot of my own mom, especially like all, like all her like you know coupons and price gouging and like no 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 no. You do not touch anything in that fridge. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say which hotel we stayed at and, like, what vacation this was, but we have done the little Indiana Jones trick, um, <laughs> where you fool the weight sensor, like, um, what is it, what was that, which one was that? I think it was, a uh, no, it wasn't, it was, a uh, fucking, it was the first one. Uh, Yeah. I, 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 we could, yeah, we've done the little Indiana Jones trick to fool the white sensor to get, you know, to, to get the free soda. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, like I, I definitely like, again, like really, really like connect with Penelope. Um, I also like that she's not like just an archetype of a TV mom. She has her own problems and struggles and they handle the, like, her military service really well. Um, they do a PTSD arc, but it's not the cliche PTSD arc. Um, I, I really enjoyed that. That's really kind like... of this show in general. They handle a lot of deep stuff with and deep issues without going cliche. Yeah, it fe- and uh, I think that's really kind of the essence of a like a Norman Lear project. I mean, like. If you, you know, know your TV history and you know your, like, you know that, like, the stuff he's been a part of, like, the Jeffersons and, you know, shit like that. And, like, how he, like, innovated the industry by actually asking some of these, you know, black actors, like, hey, so I want you to read this script and tell me, is is this how y'all talk? Like, because I want to make it authentic to your experience because, you know, we're not just out here marketing to white people. We, we, I want to be able to have people everywhere watching these shows and be like, yeah, I like them. I respect and them. And you had these stuff like All people. in the Family, mm-hmm. which addressed some big stuff for that time. You had yeah, Archie and, Bunker, one and, of the like most strong-headed like fictional yeah, and, characters and, like, ever. And, like, his daughter was um, essentially, like, prototype Elena. She was kind of, like, the, like, hippie of her time. Like, you know, believed in, uh, like, super liberal values and stuff like that. And, again, like, for that time, it was, it was like, it was, you know, making people laugh. But also bringing notice to issues that were very important at the time. Mm-hmm. And, you know... That is what this show does at its core, and it does it really, really well. I mean, um, there are some issues that you go back and you see don't age well, but those were just signs of the time. Yeah. Exactly. Like, um, you know, like, th- like, you know, there are so many people out there today, especially with, like, media, TV, movies, and stuff like that, where they bitch and complain about, like, companies and writers having agendas. Um, and in some cases, those are true. I'm not gonna front. Like, there are some times where they're like, okay, we'll, we'll, just, we'll make this, we'll make the, we'll randomly change this character um, in, into a minority character so we can check a box. We're not gonna make her into an actual character. Um, we're, gonna, <laughs> we're gonna just... <laughs> No, not, well, not, I wasn't even going to say the CW. I was actually talking about the, the new Terminator movie. Oh. Um, but yeah, the CW also fits. I ain't seen the new Terminator. Um, I, uh, I, I, I uh, watched it because I was bored. Uh, 
and it was on Amazon. Um, but yeah, no, like it's it's like that. Like you know, you got Sarah Connor, who you know is already like a like a feminist icon and like a badass, amazing character, but not because she's a woman, because she you know did shit, got shit done. I mean, um, um, I don't want to get off on a tangent, but. Sarah Connor has an amazing, like, TV arc where, in the first one, she kind of is the damsel in distress. Mm-hmm. But then and, works like, upon I, becoming a badass. Yeah, and, like, and so, like, you know, with, like, there are, case, uh, like, the point of this tangent was, like, there are genuine cases where, like, executives do just cast a, you know... Latino or Latinx, however you prefer to say it, actor or actress, just to fill a race quota. And it's upsetting because you can tell when it's done. Mm. You can t- you can obviously tell when it's done because there isn't any actual writing to those characters. One Day at a Time never has that problem. All these characters have depth. doesn't matter if they're brown, white, black, purple, whatever. Uh, there are no purple people in this show, but I feel like if they were, they would treat them right. Exactly. You know, Gr- Grimace can definitely do a cameo at some point. I don't know any other purple people. Uh, Barney? Yeah. Bar- yep. Yeah. Maybe Bar- a couple Barney, anime Barney. chicks. Uh, but yeah, no, like <laughs> th- that's th- like that's the important part, right? And that's what I love about this show. Like, yeah, Elena's super annoying and talks about, like, gender norms and social justice issues and her and her significant other, her significant other dress up as Greta and a, like, you know, CO2 cloud to talk to people about climate change and Iceberg. Halloween. Iceberg. It was an iceberg. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, she she and Sid dress up as Greta and an iceberg to talk about the melting of the polar ice caps and talk about global warming and climate change to people on Halloween. And like uh, in any other case, I would be like, oh, my God, you're just doing this for no reason. You're just trying to put a message in here because you want to seem woke. The CW is the biggest mm-hmm. offender of this. Like, Brian Coffin mentioned it before when I wasn't mentioning it, but the CW does this a lot, especially with Supergirl. I'm kind of tired of seeing it in Supergirl. Um, like, guys, we get it. She's a woman, and and for a long time, she was the only main woman on the like in the lineup. So, like, you had to do some of those, but, like, a lot of those, unnecessary. You now have, you now have Sarah Lance, uh, Batwoman, uh, yeah, all of the women on the way, right? Yeah, obviously, yeah, obviously, I would count, I would count, uh, like, all of the, uh, Legend Ladies as, like, main characters. Yeah, no, so, and, like, again, one day at a time, just avoids that problem. Like, yes, like, Elena does all this stuff, but it's because that is genuinely who she is. It's what she believes in. It's what she fights for. That is her character. And, uh, and but she's not- she is a kid at heart, and they don't mm-hmm. they don't let that go. I mean, the end of that episode yeah. proves that, which I love. Yep. I love that. Yeah, because she's like, Halloween is freaking awesome. We got a bunch of candy for people. Are you kidding me? Which, by the way, there are going to be spoilers abound. So in case you didn't already know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was my bad. Uh, I I got so caught up in, like, talking about this that I didn't uh, give the spoiler warning. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, spoilers for all. I mean, we said we said we're going to talk about all three seasons. So, like, I feel like that was implied. But just in case you need clear. Uh, spoiler alert for the first three seasons as well as the first half of season four. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really enjoy that because, like, again, it is a part of Elena's character. It's what she believes in, but also she realizes there are times where she needs to chill, which is a lot. And um, and I do not. and I do love it, though, because she doesn't give up on her, when she realizes the whole candy thing. She doesn't give up on her mission. She just says that this will be a lot of energy for when we do it tomorrow. 
Yeah, no, I, I really, I really do like love her character. Um, the actress Isabella Gomez is amazing. Which fun fact? Uh, she is best friends in real life and on the show with the actress who played Gert on The Runaways, which is one of our popular episodes mm-hmm. um, on here. Um, and uh, also, fun fact. Uh, she, for a long time, uh, dated the actor who played Alex, and apparently Alex broke her little heart, and that's sad. Um, Wait, but uh, uh, not the... uh, I did not know that part. Oh yeah, no, no, it was like, like I, I follow, I followed her for a while. I like, I saw that they were, I saw that they were dating uh, for a long time, and then like she started posting really sad tweets, and then I was like, wait, what's happening? Um, and then, like, it came out that he cheated, and then I was just like, oh, "Wait, uh, who was dating Alex's actor?" No, Alex, as in Alex uh, Wilder from Runaway. Oh, okay. My bad. Uh, it, I, I don't know. What, I don't know how to pronounce his actual first name, so I said Alex, as in Alex from Runaway. Okay. Not Alex from What Is Hot. No, 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 no. They, they're not actually dating. That would be kind of weird because they play. Yeah. Movie. No, my bad. I, I, I now I understand the confusion. My bad, Brian. I'm sorry. I did not mean to put incestuous thoughts. Yeah, in that kind of freaked um, me out for a minute. My apologies. Yeah, no, no. Uh, let me clarify. She was dating Alex Wilder from Runaways. I don't know how to pronounce his name, and I don't want to like get canceled for trying to say his name and being like, "Oh, you, 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 you know, you're culturally appropriating or something," because that's what people do on the internet. Um, but yeah, so like point is huge fan of her. So sorry that happened to you. Um, she's a great actress. Um, I, I actually, I, but Hey, and also now that Runaways is over, Carmen, you can come back now. Yeah. That, that would be nice. Like, just put on your Nico makeup, <laughs> dye your hair. And um, it would be nice to see her and Sid re- interact, because they never... Yeah, yeah, because she moved She moved before she even met Sid. Yeah, yeah. It, that, I think that would be fun. Uh, but yeah, like, I really enjoy her character a lot, um... You know, they ha- they didn't get to do as much with her, and I feel like that's kind of just a symptom of, like, them being on Pop, uh, the, the TV network that, you know, saved the show, which, by the way, thank you, Pop Yes, TV thank you. You are amazing. Um, and it's not Pop TV's fault, but I feel like, you know, and I have had this conversation with Elizabeth plenty of times, I feel like with Netflix, because they had more time, because they didn't have to incorporate commercials, um, like, they could do more stuff. Um, and, like, I think at least for this half, Elena has only kind of been relegated to background jokes, which is fine. All most of those jokes are pretty funny. Um, yeah, it, it is, but, but and uh, they this was kind of a little thing that irked me. Uh, they took a big part of her character in like the previous season and uh, delegated it to a joke. With the college essay thing. Oh, you talking about her being like super academic? No, and the the dad thing. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. That that whole that whole big thing. Yeah, and she she just kind of brushed it off. She's like, yeah, no, we're kind of cool now because you didn't recover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like th- yeah, that that was uh, so weird. That oh, yeah. that episode though with the. With the cane says, that was some oh damn good TV. Dude, I I I cry. I cried I too. Cried. And everybody, and especially when like everybody was like when he left, and then everybody else like Alex, Penelope, Snyder, um, and Lydia all dancing and Doctor K. Like, oh. oh yeah, Doctor yeah, Doctor Berkowitz. B, Dr. sorry B. B. Oh, oh man. No, Dr. K's this is us. I get it. Uh, I get it. No, TV doctors. Yeah, but anyway, Dr. B, um, uh, he even joined oh, in. And it was so sweet. It was, it was, uh, yeah, really. It was just 
genuinely sweet. Like, this show, I don't think it, like, necessarily breaks ground, but it doesn't have to. Honestly, we don't have much feel-good TV anymore, and that's what this is. It's feel-good TV. It makes me feel great. That's why I, I love this show. That's why I miss this show, and I, that's why I'm glad it's back. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, for sure. Um, also, like, uh, big shout-out to Season 4 for giving more depth to a character that I thought was cool, but kind of just there. And that's Alex, you know? Alex, he was mm-hmm. cool, but they never really did anything with him on the Netflix version. And I think this save was a wake-up call for a lot of uh, the, you know, the people involved behind the scenes with the writing and stuff like that. Because you could tell. You could tell they were like, all right, now we're going to actually do all the stuff we want to do. Um, and uh, they, they gave Alex more of an arc. And, and I, I, really I hate to say this, this but uh, it took to season four for Alex, a teen boy, to finally get a a not one off love interest. Yeah, which is, which was weird because he's like he's like a super handsome, charming kid. And they talk you about him expect- being a ladies man. Yeah, like so it, it was a little weird. Um. But also, I, I just, I really love his arc because it makes a lot of mm-hmm. sense, you know? Uh, you know, he he grew up in this house of these, like, strong women who have done all these things. You know, his abuelita, you know, escaped from a country ruled by a dictator to find a better life, sacrificed all, like, you know, her home, her family. We all, even all saw this, in the show her becoming an American citizen late in life. Yeah, which was awesome. Yeah, I think that was like the end of that was end of season two or maybe see something like that. But yeah, no, like that was awesome. Um, and then like you know, obviously you got Penelope, who uh, you know, we saw her origin story. Both her and her ex husband Victor were inspired by you know the tragic events of nine eleven, like many others, to enlist and join the military. And so you know, they sacrificed. Um, you know, time with their kids, you know, and all this other and stuff. And now she's a so nurse, lit- to quote him, literally saving lives. Yep, and, you know, she's a fucking badass. Like, you know, she said that herself. Uh, she says it all the time, and rightfully so. Yeah, um, he even says it. And I'm not an independent woman who doesn't deserve a man. <laughs> who doesn't need a man. Yep, yep. Yeah, like I, I, you know, and then like you got you got Elena, who not only like has like a bajillion different causes she, you know, thoroughly believes in and fights for genuinely, but she's smart. Um, you know, she's like damn near a genius. Um, mm-hmm. And like she's got like you know she's a straight A student. She you know does all these extracurricular activities and. Alex is just kind of a normal kid, you know? He doesn't get bad grades, but he, he's not a straight-A student. Uh, you know, he doesn't have any, like, exceptional, anything exceptional about him. And he, it makes him feel weird. Yeah, they um, they really hadn't done too much with him. I mean, they did the puberty thing and uh, him growing up. You know, uh, and, and, and a drug episode, which actually was really funny. Yeah, um, but... This goes to the show and also um, the evolution of things. The only, the only like mm. times that we saw him like big in into anything was talking about like Jordans and yeah, and di- you know di- different sh- different sneakers and like sh- uh, like shoes. Uh, well, sneakers and shoes are the same thing, but different releases. He there was even a whole plot where like where uh, where he convinced. Lydia to buy him a new pair of Yeezys, which is hilarious because, you know, she gets she gets there in the front of the line, she causes the whole scene, and she's like, I would like to buy the Jesus shoes. <laughs> yep. The what? The Jesus shoes. What? Jesus. You mean Yeezys? Yes, the, the Jesus shoes. And even Dr. B is there to try to help her. Yeah. yeah. As best as uh, he it, can. It's great. It's great. And then, like, you know, that culminates and we find out, like, 
his passion is for fashion. Yeah. I didn't even mean to rhyme there. Um, you just do it all the time. Yeah, I guess so. But, <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, which like, honestly like, makes sense for his character and also mm-hmm. goes to show another thing, another like way that this show tackles things that people don't really address too much and that Mm -hmm. is the fact that it is totally okay for a man to be straight and into fashion yeah um and also like uh i i just really like the fact that like he is a normal person and like in a really exceptional family i guess that's why I, I, I relate him a lot to, like, my younger brother because, like, you know, grow, growing up, like, uh, my, my, like, my youngest brother in particular, because, you know, growing up, I was, I was always really good in school. I, I, got old, I got, you know, a few academic awards, different things like that. I did, you know, chorus and extracurriculars and stuff. I was very Elena-like. And then my brother now, he's, like, you know, my, my middle brother, he's, you know, out here doing nursing and, like, he, he's got, he's got, his, he's got his life figured out. He's got, you know, he's got a, you know, a solid job at the bank. My little brother, he doesn't really know what to do right now. Uh, you know, he just graduated high school. He's, he's kind of like, eh, I don't really know. I'm still, I'm still a kid. I'm just trying to have fun. And like, you know, my mom's, you know, obviously like genuinely worried about that, but also like, I, I you know, we, we, we talked to her and it's like, nah, it's, it's, it's okay. Let him figure it out. Like, cause that's just how life is. And like, again, that's what like that's what I really like about this show. It feels very organic and natural because that's just a regular person, right? That's shit people go through all the time. Yeah, and the fact that uh, he went to one class and uh, didn't do so well, so he was like, yeah, really, yeah, really discouraged because he was like, and then everybody else, you know, they, they they take to everything so easily, like you know, Elena. She, she could go to any college she really wants to. The, her only problem is she doesn't know what freaking essay to do. Uh, like you, you were able to do all this stuff even after all the crap you've seen in the military. Like you know, Abuelita, she you know literally left a country, a war torn, or not war torn, but a country ruled by a dictator, uh, and like left one of her sisters behind, but just so that you know she could raise you in a better place, like. I, I, I'm not exceptional. I'm just a fuck up. And yeah, I mean, obviously he didn't say fuck up, but like, that's how he felt. And like, you know, I feel like everybody's felt that way, especially towards their, like, you know, towards their parents, like not wanting to let their parents down because, you know, their parents, obviously as a parent, you're going to have expectations for your kid to do better than you because that's kind of, that's what you want, right? Like, you want to make and sure. I don't do want to get to too much into like, realized but i definitely sympathize with him especially with the whole sibling no. thing oh yeah for sure like like again um you know like uh especially like especially like with me it, it, it's been a it's been a weird transition you know at first you know trying trying the trying the school thing um Get getting a degree to get for a certain job, and then realizing actually, I don't. That's not where my heart's at. That's not what I want to do. And then you know, going into a like honestly very unstable field, mm-hmm. um, which doesn't guarantee, which doesn't guarantee you money, which you know has your parents worried. But honestly, you're happy. But like you know, so like I, I get, I get that, I get that, like you know, that balance of like not wanting to let them down, because like. It's it's definitely a struggle everybody has. Mm-hmm. Um, like, and again, that's just the biggest strength of this show is just, it's so relatable. Like, it doesn't matter, like you know what walk of life you're from, you can find someone on this show you relate to a lot. Uh huh. And sometimes multiple characters. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so, I mean, I know we said we we're going to talk about, like, season, uh, se- all, all three season stuff, but I guess we can just kind of sprinkle it in throughout. Uh, let's talk about, like, some of the stuff, that ma- the major stuff in season four. So, let's talk about the Snyder family, huh? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, that was a, uh, that was a thing that kind of, um, 
was the whole pop effect. Yep. Yeah, definitely. I feel I feel like you know this would uh, like Netflix would have given this a little bit more time, but again, well, pop just didn't have more time because obviously. Also, I feel like such. I may be reading too much into things, but I almost feel like th- that Netflix was setting up the Snyder Penelope ship. No. Well, they both ended the season without having anyone and talking about how they could trust they, each but, other. But they also refer to each other as brother and sister. So. I don't know. I just, I just thought that I did find it weird that uh, people that they both broke up with just randomly came back and... Well, no, Avery didn't randomly come back. Um, Lydia found Avery at the end of last season and like was like, no, Snyder needs you. He's going to fall off the wagon. Which he did, but we're going to ignore that because Pop. Well, no, no, no. That No, this still happened in the Netflix season. This I know. In the Netflix but season. what I'm saying is that in the Netflix season, we ended with him going off the wagon. No, the Netflix season ended with him getting together with Avery. After he had gone off the wagon. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, I know he's I know he fell off the wagon, but he did end up with Avery by the end. Like so he so Avery didn't just pop up in season four like Max did. Uh, she was there at the end of season. But anyway, Avery, Avery was an cool interesting character. She's definitely like a female Snyder. I really liked her arc in season three where she was pretending to be poor so that she wouldn't intimidate Snyder. And Snyder was doing the exact same thing and then they both found out they were rich. They was like, oh, thank God. Mm-hmm. The... Uh, and in this one, they in this season, they just randomly like, it's like, I thought I had one of everything. And she's like, I had three. Yep. But uh, there's yeah. one thing uh, that he doesn't which... have. Which goes into this season. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm not going to. So, I kind of. So, I kind of hate the fact that uh, I. I, uh, I I look into episode descriptions when I get thumbnails. Because. I don't know, and I don't know who did this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yell at the pop intern who made this episode description. <laughs> but so the first three episodes had like had images and episode descriptions out, right? So I was like, all right, let me get a jump on making these thumbnails. So I, you know, I look at the episode descriptions. I get the thumbnails. First one, fine. Second one, okay, interesting. Third one outright like uh, like th- like third one out outright says nursery in it, and I'm like, wait a minute, dang! Thank you, episode description. Well, I well I can beat you on that because uh, I was uh, I was googling season four. And I googled, and I googled one day at a time, season four, and one of the first videos mm-hmm. that pops up, so-and-so is pregnant. Ah, oh, dang. Uh, but yeah, no, like, uh, um, other than that, like, I, I really enjoyed, I, I enjoyed that reveal, I, you know, uh, but at the same time, like, if... I hadn't have known it would have hit harder, but it still it still worked. Also, the costumes in that episode that they used mm-hmm. were amazing, um, especially the last one where he was, you know, Drogon and she was Daenerys. Yep. I mean, apparently Elton John won the competition because he was dressed as Garfield eating lasagna, which I want to yep. see that. And I love that though. Elton John won the contest. Who was a who, who dressed up as Elton John? No. Elton John. No, Elton John. Which you know, which you know, though, actually, that has another layer of comedy to it. 
Because uh, do you remember what Snyder went as last year? We what did he go by as himself? Last year? I don't remember. He was the hang remember. in there cat. Oh yeah, so someone right. won mm-hmm. wearing a cat costume this year. Yeah, that, I did. I did funny. love that lo- um, like little side joke there, where he was like, and. I didn't win, and I was going to give up. But then I looked in the mirror, and something told me to keep going. Because <laughs> he was the hang yep. in there cat. Yep. Oh man, no, and like my my favorite my, that episode is one of my mm-hmm. favorites because like uh, it has like the most accurate like interpretation of Hispanic parents meeting each other. <laughs> Because straight up, like when like they just and it's just like, Alex, get your ass out here. And I was just like, oh, I have been there, buddy. And um, and the uh, very much proving it with our intro, I definitely sympathized with Max there. In that oh, episode, oh, he like. <laughs> May I ask Max? He's <laughs> just like she was just like just stand there and look pretty. <laughs> no, but I, I I love that and like I also I also just love it was like super genuine because like you know if, if you ever like listen to like Spanish speakers speak Spanish they sound like fucking auctioneers, dude. Like it's it's crazy how fast people can talk. I mean, I I talk pretty fast. And I can talk. I can talk even faster in Spanish. In fact, honestly, one of the most regular comments I used to get on my YouTube channel was, "Dude, you're talking way too fucking." Fast. And to be fair, with like the big uh, CW episodes, you were, but you were just trying to get in all that shit. Exactly. And I was. It got to the point where I was like, "Hey guys, uh, so I texted it. If you slow me down to like, but." Uh, at like 0.75 speed. If you slow the video down to 0.75, it's fine. <laughs> you can understand me. I can understand me fine because that's just how I naturally talk and that's how other people around me talk. Yeah, you were like, I, I sound a little drunk, drunk but you can understand me. <laughs> no, but like, I, you know, I'm, I'm just, an, I'm a natural fast talker. So like, hear, hearing it from other people, I'm I'm very I'm very happy like that like it's not just me but uh, but yeah that episode like uh, all the yeah. costumes yeah I also I also really dig the the silver hair look for Alex uh it's, it's, it's yeah it, it does very much remind me of Zane yeah I I I, I was thinking the same thing um but. But yeah, yeah that, and, so that, I, and that, I love that, it. That, that. We got to see Rita Moreno dressed as Belle. As Belle! Yeah, and then Dr. B as the Beast. Oh my god, that was so good. That was and so good. And then that good. joke, they were a couple? Mm-hmm. No, and what and then what I liked what I liked about that one, uh, like especially Lydia, when uh, Elena comes back with all the candy and she goes, why did no one else tell me Halloween was this fun? Uh, what? Uh, and it's like, and Lydia's just like, everybody knew that. And Who knew like, Halloween yeah, could be this everybody fun? Everybody knew that. Everyone. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh my and god. I love it. Like, I forgot the, I forgot who they are now, but the just random guest stars that came in as the Halloween. Oh yeah, like uh, like oh my god, like I there were there was the, the I know one of them was one of the ladies from the Jeffersons, uh, and like a bunch of sitcom. It royalty. was another dude who was another them. sitcom like, royalty, but I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like Elsa and <laughs> Olaf, Elsa and Olaf, uh, Dorothy and the Tornado. Yep, those um, were the two, but it was still funny. Yep. And I love it where they give her whole size. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. L- listen, man. 
listen, man. You don't you don't fuck around with the no. full size candy bars. Trick or treating, trick or treating was and awesome. And I love that man. though, where it's like, but whole size it's candy bars. And then yep. you see them at the end, and they've got a pretty good stack. That's a really nice. That was a really solid hole. Like that. That was but, awesome. But, um, and uh, then uh, also so we can't another, deny it. Another though, episode. Uh, Max and mm-hmm. Penelope were really good as. Yeah, Dan and Sandy. Yo, I I, I love I love Penelope as like you know. Ho look Sandy, as I like to call it. Um, because like let's be real, like the the message of Greece was, you know, change for the boy. Um, and that was Ho and, Sandy. But Ho and Sandy also I love that the joke that they made that addresses another thing about that, and it's like, is it wrong that I'm turned on by you when you're dressed as a teenager? Right. Um also, like, I also love, like, Max's reaction, because, you know, Max, obviously, he's, like, you know, younger. He doesn't know, he doesn't know what Grease is. I mean, which, you know, you should be ashamed mm-hmm. of yourself, first off. I mean, um, um, even the kids on Million Little Things know what Grease is. Yeah, but, yeah, no, like, uh, he was like, why are you dressed like an old biker lady? Yeah. Uh, that that was great, but like, come on, man! You don't know what Greece is. Like, but yeah, also dude. though, Penelope's response to when Max said that he was turned on, she was like, "Yep, they were all the actors were all forty in there." Yep, uh, that that was pretty funny. Um, also, another episode I want to highlight uh, is just like this this really this really fun one off episode where they decide to splurge that Penelope's making a lot more money mm-hmm. to buy a new couch because the the couch literally just imploded and fell apart um and there's a whole like there's a whole side plot about Elena wanting to go to an esports match um and like there's this, this joke about crabs <laughs> that uh, Rita Moreno does that just had me weak she she buys a crate of crabs from the seafood market and he go, and then she's like the bus driver wouldn't let me get on the bus when I told him I had crabs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, um, since when we're I... doing episode highlight, it was super awkward but also super funny. Oh my! Oh my God! Oh, okay, if we're talking about the boundaries. Ep- you know, the boundaries episode yeah. was the funniest episode of this entire series so far. I'm gonna say that that is the funniest episode of this entire series so far. This which, series has um, plenty talks of funny about, episodes. Which, uh, real quick, uh, uh, aren't you glad we're not? Yeah, monetized, unsung, right? unsung, like I wouldn't say heroes, but unsung all stars of the show that didn't get too much focus, like any visible screen time at all in the pop episodes. And that's Penelope Support Group. Yeah, which has Carl yep. from Scrubs as a lesbian. Mm-hmm. Um, which, like, yo, by the way, Zach Braff, um, Donald, get her on that podcast, mm-hmm. man. Um, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, no, like that. Like that episode was fucking hilarious. All the jokes were just on, and I love how they and they addressed a normal, a normal like typical sitcommy type thing, but they flipped it on its head. Yeah, because it was the adult this time, and it wasn't like you know, it wasn't the kid caught you know doing the thing, Mm -hmm. having some alone time. No, it was it was the mom caught having some alone time with like the most commonly memed like this is for middle aged moms to you know have their fun time with TV show and that is Outlander, a show that neither Brian nor I could get into because it felt just weird because it was just it was like overly sexual and not in a fun way. I tried and it was very boring 
Yeah, I was um, really bored. But it's also insane. at the same time, there are like three sex scenes in the first episode. Yep. Yeah. So, so it was like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm I, Which... I was, I was definitely, I, I, I laughed so hard when she was like, oh, it was Outlander. Of course, it was fucking Outlander. And which was kind uh, of um sad for me because the crux of the show is time travel. And yep, if you know anything about me. I love time travel. Yeah, Brian really wanted to try. He gave it more of a shot than me. And he was just like, yeah, no. If I don't like it, I know for sure you're not going to like it. I'm like, all right, bet. Yeah, um, it, it was... It, uh, but yeah. No. And it was sad that it was a no. But yeah. No, like, that shit was hilarious. Well, they had so many good jokes in there. I can't even name them all, but one of my favorites is, like, they lose the remote, and uh, she goes, um, and then, like, Rena Morano was like, um, and then, uh, what do you call it? She goes, oh, that's not the remote for the TV, Mom. Because it's like, oh, I'm sure you would know. You're, you are, uh, you're probably an expert on uh, battery, battery-operated appliances, aren't you? Oh, wow. Uh, I didn't realize this. Of... Uh... The leader of the support group, Pam, mm-hmm. was uh-huh. one of the cast members of the original. Oh wow! I I think she might. Yeah, I think she might be. Uh, the she original was, no, she was the original, like, like teenager. Yeah, she was the oh, daughter. She was the daughter. Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, but yeah, like uh, that that episode was so fucking funny, like. Um, especially like because it was it was told like as a, like a story at first and then like poor poor Alex he's about to go get his own it's like that's not my fault it's cause cause he heard the uh, uh. yeah he put it on silent he put it on no no he put it on silent and vibrating and so he, he calls his phone from the landline and it's just like he hears uh 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 it's like whoa not my phone <laughs> Which poor kid. Yeah, you got me scarred for life. <laughs> oh man. Uh, but like that was hilarious. All of all of Rita Moreno's masturbation jokes were just and... on fire. So fucking funny. And and I loved Elena in this episode because like her fuck her wanting to teach Lydia about the female orgasm and how excited <laughs> she was about it. Like she's she was, she was like, oh, can I tag in? Can I tag in? And Max was like, can I tag out? <laughs> yeah. And I also love, and I love, like, the so jokes good. that came from, like, when people first found out about the whole situation. And it's like, like, especially with, with Rita Moreno, she's like, Oh, Papi, you, Papito, you don't need to be doing that. He's like, it wasn't me. Yeah, it wasn't me. And, she, and then she was like, oh, Jesus, yeah. Which, by the way, if you need a translation, that's uh, how dirty. But, but yeah, that was a really funny episode. And, oh my God. One of my favorites, which was probably the, like, one of the, like, worst, like, one of the more adult jokes, was, uh, uh-huh. I mean, it, one of the support group ladies was like, yeah, we all do that, like, under the covers. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, which, yeah, yeah, un- under the covers in the dark, and, he go, and she, uh, Penelope starts to laugh, she goes, <laughs> yeah, it would have been nice if it was under the covers and in the dark. And she goes, wait a minute, you were just out? Yeah, she goes, I was home alone. No one was supposed to be here for like an hour. Mm-hmm. And they're all like, oh. Oh. Ah, that was, that was, that was really good. Um, also, uh, so I guess the, the only like remaining kind of plot point from this season uh, was... um. It's just kind of Penelope's love life. I really love how they did this. 
Because well, um, you know, most shows. There is one thing that kind of irks me about I mean, it. That Max just appeared. Well, not out of just that. Um, like I, yeah. Uh, do you remember what the reason why they broke up in the first place? It's because it's the yeah, it's the Alex Maggie Sawyer problem. Like uh, Max wanted kids, and Penelope was like, "Nah, I'm done." And uh, yet. Yet, they have a whole episode where they reveal that uh, she maybe wants to have more kids, but not get married. Did did she say she wanted to have? More yeah, kids? that was their. That was the reason she why. Said she... No, I no. She said she didn't want any more kids. And she didn't want to get married. Wait, was she the one that said that she didn't want kids? Yeah, no. Max wanted kids. She did not want kids or or to get married. She just wanted to be in a rela- like a huh. like, long term relationship. All right, that's my yeah. bad. But there were still some other pop issues that ran over. But just like, but you were right though, because one of them is just. Like the way that Max just comes in, it's just like, oh, I found him at the grocery store. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, uh, that that was my only issue that Max just kind of randomly popped up. Um, like you know, but other than that, I, because I, I, honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you. I was, I mean, I didn't think it was actually gonna happen because the actor is huge. But I was low key, really, really hoping for Snyder's sponsor. To become Penelope's new love interest. And if you guys don't know, Schneider's sponsor is none other than Deathstroke himself, the homie Joe Magdanello. Yeah. Uh... Like, and, like, he even, like, he basically is playing himself because he even is like, yeah, no, I'm just, you know, I just play D&D with my homies in, in my house. <laughs> Which he literally has a man cave dedicated strictly to D and D in his house. Oh, he, he oh yeah, I believe so. it. I believe it's the basement. And uh, Sophia's mm. like, yeah, I don't go there. But then again, she goes. I, I, that I, did I, kind I, of inspire me to make my I, own I room I, that he doesn't go into. Yep, she's like, you know, I I don't, I don't really know what it's about, but it makes him happy. So I, yeah, I'm okay, which I'm okay with I love it though because he. He goes on all the D and D shows and all that. Yeah, he's he's fucking cool, man. Uh, I, I wanted to see him. More Which uh, just show, quick side like note, huge actor. I will be really sad and disappointed if him and Orvin Diesel are not in the D and D movie. Right. Um. But yeah. Like uh, I, I was kind of hoping that maybe he'd be the, like the possible new love interest, but you know, yeah, Max I just cool. feel like but maybe I really do like how they. I hate to say this, but uh, pop isn't as uh, like I guess you could say financially stable as as Netflix, so. I mean, yeah, th- I mean, but that's a big comparison. This is so, well, my point is, uh, I'm thinking, yeah, what if they just simply couldn't afford him? No, couldn't not Max. Max. Uh, I mean, maybe. Oh, uh, oh, John Magnello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, could, he yeah, is pretty be. busy. Um, all. The- Although Lin Manuel Miranda, like, I'm hoping you oh, show up. Oh, oh, uh, oh. Another thing. Because he helped save one day at a time. Another thing that could be the whole thing is now that it's gone to pop, I imagine that they're filming week by week instead of Netflix, which filmed. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, they are. They do. They do film week by week. That was the whole reason why, like, uh, they 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 said, yeah, we're definitely coming back for another half because, like, you know. But uh, it's, it's Netflix it's does it all in uh, chunks, so maybe someone that's as big as Joe Montanello mm-hmm. could come in for a chunk, but not commit to week to week. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I would I would definitely be, I would be down for that. Um, also, like I, I want some of the like the Brooklyn Nine Nine people from last season that showed up. Like Amy was there, and and Rosa, they were <laughs> they were all members of the family. Like well, let's bring Amy and Rosa back, especially because Amy was like Penelope's friend, like family, like inside the family friend. Uh, I definitely want to see her back. I, I know her name isn't Amy, but because I, I love Brooklyn Nine Nine, like, uh, like that's just how and I'm going to remember her um, Amy. Um, if we're talking about like one guest stars, I wouldn't mind if like, you know, same network, maybe someone like, uh, uh, God, what's his name? Uh, Eugene Levy made like cameo. Oh, that would be fun. Uh, I would also like to see Tim Rozon show up because Tim Rozon was also on uh, Shit's Creek, uh, and uh, you know, Winona Earp. There's always a big crossover. They always shout out. They always give Winona love. Uh, so it would be cool yep, for Tim Rozon in- to show indeed. up. Indeed. I mean, let's be honest. We geek the f out if any of the Winona Earp showed. <laughs> oh my god, yo, <laughs> yo, hold on. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. If Waverly showed up, mm-hmm. I would freak the fuck out. Because because Waverly and Elena meeting each other, I, I, I my heart couldn't handle that. <laughs> Too cute. Kawaii overload. Too <laughs> cute. I couldn't I couldn't process that. Um but like I said, Lynn, mm-hmm. Lynn should definitely get a guest spot at some point because again he helped save the show because he loved it so much, and he was like, "No, th- isn't this he is still busy on making um, what you call it? Uh, that movie? Oh, the oh yeah, oh yeah, the In the Heights movie, yeah. For but for, uh, uh, when he's done with that, shows, older plays. Yeah, I would definitely love to see him on the show because he helped Gloria and Mike, you know, ship it to other, pitch it around to other network. He goes, "Hey, NBC." You know, you listen to me with Brooklyn Nine Nine. Maybe you could take one day at a time too. And I mean, and did, and you know, it would be like cool, that. and be like a thing that they really hadn't done before. Have have a guest star come in, who's like mentor esque for Max. Dude, yeah. Like, um, if they were still on Netflix, I would love for the Queer Eye guys to show up, but. Yeah. And, like, well, um, yeah. you know, uh, you know who else? I hate to be like stereotypical, and I know he's the go-to, but uh, who can maybe cameo? Especially because uh, I don't think that he has the best relationship with Netflix. Uh, so maybe as like a screw you, he could come in for a cameo. Uh, Tim Gunn. Ah, oh, dude, they didn't mention Broadway Runway. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, and um, in, like, um, also, fashion episode. speaking about, like, fashion-related people, wouldn't it be funny, though, if, like, Nev Campbell actually came in for a cameo and we found out that what, uh, yeah. Lydia said was true, yeah. That would be hilarious. Um, but yeah, you guys, uh, we love this show. Uh, once again, thank you to Pop TV for bringing it back. We are looking forward to uh, the second half. Um, the next thing they're coming out with is an animated election special. So, very Wait, curious. Wait, what? To see how that is. Yeah, the next, uh, the next thing they're coming back with, I think, uh, uh, in a few months, is an election special. And it's animated. Uh, we don't know. We don't know uh, what animation style, but uh, um, if you uh, like, I know Mike, both Mike and Gloria okay. talked about that. Uh, very curious. I, I I don't honestly know. Jono say I I guess is the proper answer to that. Jono say. <laughs> Jono say. I do know. I do know uh, a little bit, but but can you? But yeah, like I'm I'm. Definitely uh, curious to see how that goes. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's like, I, and I was also really happy that, like, yeah, this show definitely is more liberal leaning, obviously, but 
they don't do the easy shots. They only mention mm-hmm. him one time. And I was like, okay, cool. Cool, thank you. I thought Elena was going to go ham. But she did not go ham. But she might go ham in this election episode. Mm-hmm. Woo. I'm actually kind of looking forward to also, what happens there. Also, um, they could do the whole but, thing about, uh, like, the whole tricky thing of being patriotic, but not completely supporting. Mm-hmm. Yes. POTUS. Yep. Yeah, no. Uh, like, I, I'm definitely curious, because, you know, obviously, we have some smart writers in this writer's room. They're not going to just you know, do the easy shots. They're going to do, they're going to, like, they, they probably have something very clever planned. I, I mean, a lot of uh, look at their track record of and girls. covering other sensitive topics this season. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely interested. In, and, like, when they said animated, I was like, okay, well, what kind of animation are we talking? Like, 2D, 3D, clay? You never know. Like, yeah. I'm are we going to get, curious. like, a... Uh, mm-hmm. But, uh... I doubt so, but there is also the option for, uh, like, cardboard stop motion, like OG South Park. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm really curious to see what it is. Um, and then, of course, obviously, I'm looking forward to the second half of the show. Um, real quick, uh, what, some, what are some things you would like to see them cover in uh, the second half? I mean, I definitely want more stuff with Elena. Uh, I feel like Elena hasn't gotten, um, you know as much screen time as she usually does. Uh, you know, I you know I joke that she's annoying, but I really do like her yeah, character. Yeah, so and I would, I would like, like to see more, more of, of Max um, and his story. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I, def- I definitely want to see them continue developing uh, Alex and his own, like, you know, fashion dream. Oh, because well, Max is the son of well, George also Lopez. Max I made that mistake all the time. character on the show, so... I know, the boy... Yeah, yeah, I, I know, but also, I, I used to always call him Max. Well, I think it was George both Lopez for me, and... but, uh, but yeah, Alex, that's what I meant to say. I would like to see more of Alex, because they definitely set up a way for Max to, like, not be there for several episodes on end. I also do want to know, I also do want to know more about Nora and, like, her deal. And like, she's also... been very interesting, like... Uh, but yeah, for sure, because she seems, like, really cool. Like, I like how she's, like, instantly bonding with the mom and stuff. And, uh... Mm-hmm. I would like to see, um... I don't know if they ever will, because I know that it's always been their go-to joke and all that. But, uh, I would like to somewhat see, see and get some redemption for, uh, Dr. B's daughter. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would, I'm Which, sure uh, they'll you know, eventually do that. Have we seen like, her? It is their running joke. No, we haven't. Like, he's gone, he's gone outside of her house, and she's, like, called Ooh, him and yelled at him from the I phone. I just thought of a perfect seen. actress to play his daughter. I don't know if they'd get her, though. Oh, yeah? Uh, Judy Greer. Oh, yeah? Shoot. Uh, oh, Pam. Shit. Uh, not Pam, uh, Cheryl from Archer. The office, yeah. Uh, the office, You're not yeah. my supervisor. Archer, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. No, Cheryl, I could totally see. That would be great. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, no, I, I would be. I would totally be down for that. Um, and like, I could also see her having a crush on Snyder because she's, you know, Snyder's rich, and like, you know, she's like all about bleeding Leslie mm-hmm. dry. That's the running joke. Um, oh, I also want to see more of Daddy Snyder, like. It's not, that's not really weird to say, uh, but like, you know, I, and, I want to uh, see him do we dad, man. Like, him where Snyder's mom. mom is? Um, I think uh, it's it was confirmed that she died, um, and he just had his oh. shit, uh, piece of shit dad. My bad. And like he and he bounced. Oh yeah, step, that's right. Uh, but you know who? You know who also would be interesting to see though? Avery's parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, real quick, we didn't talk about it. We, I want to quickly like, address it. Like the last. Oh episode, yeah. Was, like, oh my god, that was. Oh, geez, it was. It was kind of like it was kind of like, like the, the the Halloween episode where 
they had one thing that just kept passing from ship to ship. Which is quick, quick side note, real quick, because mm-hmm. I know we're getting towards the end. I just want to say, I love that joke about the pregnancy test with Elena. Yeah, she. Uh, I, that was that was my fa- that was that was one of our favorite uh, exchanges between her and Rita Moreno. She goes, "You do realize you need a man to do that, right?" And then, uh, like, and then, like, uh, uh, of course, Lydia is like, "I would, I, I believe the Virgin Mary." And it's like, how many back times back do I have to come out the that. closet? But yeah, no. It's, but it's yeah, great. the super uh, serious uh, yeah, last episode uh, though, where it was like a joke from each oh one, my God. where they kind of kept setting it up that yep. they were uh, but, each ship was going to propose, and then they're like, "No, nah, it's not me." And I even I even love it though because yep. no, at, at, yeah, yeah, because at, at first at first like you know uh, Nora thought it was like Max trying to set the mood. I, I said Max too. Alex trying to set the mood to you know to do a little nasty stuff on the roof and then he's like no actually because they actually I'm, I'm, I'm go into it and he's like i don't want to because... get a divorce <laughs> yeah which I, that was so cute but also damn dude yeah and then and loud. then it went to and then he goes and, and he, and i also love that he's like i'm sorry like i i say embarrassing things when i get nervous uh like you know, I, I i pulled up to the the driver window at a, a burger joint one time and i, I when I accidentally called the like the drive. He's like that was very it. weird. But then, but then you had Elena um, and Sid, uh, where we quickly offhanded yep. mentioned that they got over their issue of like being together during college. But also, quick cute side note though, Elena talking about like mentioning that she ate all the chocolates. <laughs> Yep. Um. And but yeah. But then we get to like kind of like bringing back a, a plot line that like was at the very end of season three, uh, where like you know Lydia goes to Cuba to like you know spread Berto's ashes, their abuelito, and um like you know they they didn't mention it all season so far, and I think it's yeah, gonna same, be something or they up didn't later. bring up but at all because bring... of the whole pop thing. But uh, I didn't think they were gonna not bring it up because, like, they kept all the other Netflix stuff. Um, everything's pretty much remained intact. Like, they didn't forget about anything. I remember us having conversations that they well, might have forgot about it, but uh, but anyway, they didn't. Which was funny though, because at first well, I thought it was gonna be a thing of Doctor B proposing, and then they had the whole mm-hmm. joke of. Uh, Taking the top off, yeah, and then they're like, Mommy, which can't also I love that where going. they started going then, that way. And uh, Penelope just looked at the others and she was like, Do you want to just jump off the building? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah let's, let's just jump off the roof right now. I don't want to, but then that. it's like, Mommy, no, and then and, and then and, and no, and then like, no, and I love it because like, uh, you know, Alex looked right at her like. Did you think I wanted to see that in a couple episodes? But, which I love that they did the whole double <laughs> double standards for that episode. But um, anyway, she's yep. like, "Mommy, no." Yep, and then yeah, and and the, and then so that like they find out what it is, and like you know they're spreading Berto's ashes here because she realized Cuba's not her home anymore. You know she went back it, there, and it's not the same place. Everything was still uh, her there. Real home. Is with her family, mm-hmm. but it didn't feel Which, right. Trust me, um, as someone who's moved around she, a lot, I went back to my, I guess you could say, home place I grew up when I was, when I was an adult, and it definitely felt different. But, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, like you know, so he's, she's like, you know, uh, his real home is here with you know with his family. So like you know, we decided to spread. His ass is here. And then, the, like, you know, Penelope talks about how, like, you know, you know, he loves working up here, different things like that. So that makes a lot of sense. Alex so got to talk about how, uh, really sweet. how everyone says that they're alike and he hopes that he lives up to his yep. legacy. And Penelope yeah, and yeah. our yep. little girl Elena almost got me. 
Oh my god, yo, that was the sweetest one. She was, she was, she was just like, I would have thought, you know, I know you were old fashioned, but I know you of all people would have support me, uh, would have supported me. Um, I, lo- I, you know, I'll, you know, and that I makes me you miss you even me. more. I hope you're proud of me. You know. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, oh, oh man. And then, and then, you know, of course, like. Um, like Penelope says some really sweet things like, you know, you should see them, you know, they're doing great. We're all doing great, but we miss you, Bobby. Um, and I, I, of course, the funniest one, Snyder, he goes, Poppy, Bobby, Poppy. He goes, Did- I never got to meet you, but thank you for this amazing family. Um, um, and, you know, I, I, prom- I promise that, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look out for them just as much as they've looked out for me. And Aww, I'm just like, oh, Snyder. 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 Yeah, right? That's Snyder. <laughs> oh. But yeah, like that was uh, that was the perfect way to end this half, man. So far, like, n- not to jinx it, but like so far, every show that's been kind of forced to cut ma- uh, cut short because of the pandemic has found really solid endings, man. Like, I mean, some of them. At least my opinion, some of them haven't always felt finale e, but have been a solid episode overall. I, I can't oh, like remember right now, and we're we're had, running like, low on time. Like we're really low, dude. And we still need to do plugs oh, and stuff. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, there isn't really much to plug, but yeah, plug time. Well, yeah, like you said, there's not much. Yeah, but we really like it, and. uh as far as me for plugs, really didn't do to any much anything. I mean, Legends came out, and that day I wasn't feeling well, so I just decided to skip it. So I really hadn't done anything this week and upcoming week. Hopefully I'll get back to Legends, and if I can catch up on other shows, I might cover them as well. Uh, but for now, everything's up in the air. Sorry, people. Uh, work, work has uh, um, picked back up, and... Uh, because I, without getting too much, I am an essential worker, so I still have to get up and go to work every day, and uh, that plus all the shows being up in the air has kind of made my schedule a little off, and I apologize, but uh, that's it for me. Yep, uh, so in terms for me, uh, I just put up the Harley review not too long ago for the latest episode, uh, it was pretty great. Uh, I also did reviews for Solar Opposites uh, Season 1, which we will be doing next week on Channel Chasers, uh, the Justin Roiland original Hulu animated series. Uh, that was pretty funny. Um, I nice. enjoyed that a lot. It's going to be fun to discuss. Uh, I, also did a, I also did a review of Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. Uh, it, was a, it was okay. I mean, it's, it's good. It has a lot of cool scenes, but I wouldn't put it as one of my favorites. Uh, um, and then um, in terms of stuff coming up, uh, Katie Kane's finale is next week, so I'll be doing that. Um, Flash's finale is this week, I'll be doing that. Uh, uh, Batwoman still has a couple, I think same with Supergirl. Um, so I'll, I'll be waiting for the finale on those. Obviously, I'm also still doing the Batwoman podcast. So, uh, you know, if you are coming from over there to here, welcome. And uh, if you ha- if you're just a fan of over here, definitely go listen to um, that. We have a lot of fun. Also, uh, didn't you well. say that you were going to do something with the Flash when it ends? Yeah, I, I, I said. Oh, yeah, sorry, I said my bad. Flash um, this week. I got a little distracted. Uh, yep. Yeah, uh, so that's pretty much it. Just doing Katie Keen finale, Flash finale. I said fuck Riverdale, so. Uh, we're not just we're not doing that. I, if you have nothing nice to say, I'm not. Don't um, say anything at all. Nothing, nothing about. Nice uh, you're not doing. Um, uh, oh, uh, I am Legends? doing in the dark because I'm caught up on in the dark. Uh, so I will. Oh yeah, Legends too. Yeah, do I one day at a time is over now, so I can do Legends on time. Uh, so yeah, uh, that as well. Uh, so yeah, next week we'll be doing Solar Opposites. So we're actually keeping kind of the trend of light. Um, well, this one had a row, little bit of nice. a somber. So yeah, into it, but uh, was more lighthearted. 
Yeah. So uh, hopefully you'll join us for the Solar Opposites episode. We had a lot of fun here. And uh, again, thank you, Pop yes, TV. Thank, thank you, you everybody involved in one Everyone. Time. This is a fantastic show. Can't wait for it to. Can't wait for it to come back. Adios. But until next.